95.7 WCRC. Joining me now, Dr. Ryan Jennings, the Chief Medical Officer at HSHS St. Anthony Hospital. Good morning, Ryan. Hey, good morning, Gail. How are you? I'm great. How are y'all doing over there at the hospital? Well, we're doing all right. Uh, kind of uh, seeing uh, seeing a little more uh, things in the, in the state that maybe we hadn't uh, experienced up to this point with with the addition of, of more testing, which is fantastic to see additional testing going on. Of course, anytime you do that, you see more positives. And so uh, I think, uh, you know, some of what we're seeing as far as increasing numbers of positive tests uh, statewide for sure and, and some within the region uh, is really just a reflection of doing more testing and, and doesn't necessarily herald, uh, uh, you know, b- big things to come. But at the same time, what we're seeing is an increase in mortality, increase in patients that are actually dying. And and I do think some of that reflects uh, just uh, now we're, we're into the, a long enough amount of time that we're starting to see more more folks dying uh, because this disease, unlike a lot of other diseases, is a really drawn out course for a lot of folks. They'll, they'll come in sick, and if they're sick enough to end up on a ventilator and things like that, they're oftentimes on it for many, many days rather than just, uh, you know, just a couple of days. They're oftentimes on it for, you know, a couple of weeks. And so I think what we're starting to see bear out now is, uh, you know, folks kind of had a long, long progression of the disease and now unfortunately are uh, running out of of the ability to continue to support them, and so we're seeing a little bit more mortality. Uh, so I think a little bit was of this is predictable, you know, that we, we kind of knew as this disease progresses, the prevalence increases in the community, and, and then ultimately, uh, you know, some folks reach, uh, exhaust uh, their ability for continued support. Um, so I don't think it's a, a a cause for for significant panic, uh, but I do want folks to kind of understand where those how those statistics come from, and maybe they look a little different than what we expect with some other diseases. That you know that makes total sense, and just when you break that down like that, Ryan, it is just it sounds like pure common sense, but something that we as lay people would never never have been able to look at that way. Well, and it's stuff we didn't know before, truthfully, mm-hmm. you know, as, as we've learned more about this particular disease and, and learned more about how it evolves over time, uh, you know, we're, we're learning a lot along the way, too. And, and uh, as we've done that, you know, we're learning more about how to care for people safely, how to, to keep our, our health care team safe, and how to keep our community safe. And, and uh, so, so far, you know, we've been uh, continue to be pretty fortunate uh, on the whole with the number of positive cases regionally. Uh, but again, we'll see that tick up with increased testing. But nonetheless, uh, being able to start thinking about things like, like, you know, like reopening some of the elective surgeries and, and those types of things and, and working out plans on how to uh, safely bring folks into the hospital, be able to care for them, uh, and get some of those procedures that once, uh, once sounded like, okay, we'll just wait a month, uh, but are now reaching the point that you know, they're desperately needed. And so uh, we're finalizing some plans to kind of go along with the, the IDPH's recommendations for uh, resuming Resuming some of that elective work uh, next week or May 11th uh, really is the is the start update uh, from the state, and so uh, that'll look a little different than what folks have experienced before, because part of it does require that folks coming in for elective surgeries do have uh, a test for COVID prior to coming. So uh, it'll be a little bit uh, a little bit more to it than what has been historically. But uh, that's all about making sure that then we're able to to care for the patient safely, and uh, keep our keep our healthcare workers and the other other patients in the hospital safe. And of course, continuing with all of our screening of our uh, folks for fever and and respiratory symptoms, things like that, on an on an ongoing basis, uh, to keep our team uh, healthy and, and ready to care for uh, the community as they come back and in, in for those elective type procedures. Right, and it it is important to get those people in there who were scheduled for elective procedures because a lot of people think that an elective procedure is something uh, that isn't essential. But I think what most people don't understand is that to me, and I could be wrong, correct me if I am, but elective surgery simply means that it's non-emergent. I, that's that's really the definition that we've kind of gone with in this. I mean, there there's obviously degrees of things. Things like uh, you know something that's purely cosmetic uh, is different than something that you know is, is a needed test, like a uh, screening colonoscopy. You know, saying okay, I'm 45, I'm supposed to have my colonoscopy, and so we've put those those types of things off because there you know there there's a little bit of latitude around the magic number of 45 mm-hmm. but reality is you sure don't want to to go too long and then end up accidentally with something that's much more advanced and 
we're saying the same type of thing applies in the radiology world. We've got you know many women that that opted to delay mammography you know for for a period of time, and we're going to be working to to start to get those things scheduled again because the last thing we want to do is to have delayed uh, screening testing and things like that, and then someone end up with an unfortunate diagnosis. Absolutely, yeah. We don't uh, some things you just don't need to put off any longer than absolutely necessary. But then when we do, we got to do it safely. So that's really what we're looking at is, is rolling out those plans to, to get folks uh, back and get that care rendered. Unfortunately, this is not something that's just going to one of these days be gone. So we have to, to learn how to work in an environment where it's it's just part of, of things like we've always dealt with. I mean, we've always had various infections and things like that out there that, that we dealt with from time to time. And once this becomes more of a uh, something that's just kind of in the background, not something that's in the forefront, uh, then we'll have our processes in place to render care safely. That's, and that is, that's going to be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And we can, we can always wish that it would just go away, but that's not going to happen. So uh, as you said, we have to learn how to deal with it, deal with it safely, and everybody remains safe and healthy. That's what we're setting up for, and uh, we're just excited. Uh, I know everybody is to get some appearance of normalcy back in, uh, you know, operations and and just life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, get back isn't that to a little bit truth. of normal life. Absolutely. Well, Ryan, thank you so much again for your time, for joining us and explaining things so well, and um, just so we can all understand it. And I guess we'll be talking next week then. We sure will, and I sure appreciate it. Thank you to WCRC. You are very welcome. Thank you, Ryan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.